All organizations today are undergoing some form of digital transformation that is transforming their business models from being more manual and less automated to using technology to get closer to their customers and to be more efficient in delivering their goods and services. As organizations embrace digital transformation, they often embrace a larger number of best of breed cloud applications in order to increase the efficiency of delivering these goods and services. So all organizations are facing what we call the jelly bean problem or the challenge of authorization management in a multi-cloud world. The problem can be thought best thought of uh, using jelly beans as an analogy. And if you imagine jelly beans as your users, whether they're internal or external, as the identities, these are the identities that you must manage and secure and allow them to participate uh, in your IT systems and applications in order to have that customer to employee relationship and also to deliver goods and services. So here we can see in this slide, different colors of jelly beans. Each color of jelly bean representing a different type of user, whether it's a customer, whether it's a partner, or if they're employees, different parts of the organization, different business units, different geographic regions, however you break out your company. Now, traditionally, having these different types of user was less challenging. Organizations had fewer systems and applications, and most of those relied on a structured or hierarchical directory like Active Directory or LDAP for their authentication and authorization. Now, these applications pointing to a single or a few structured and hierarchical Active Directories or LDAP directories allowed organizations to arrange these jelly beans into OUs to easily control which administrative users would have access to see and to manage these identities, and also to automate the access granted to each, each of these different classes of users or jelly beans. So delegation of admin roles was easily done using this hierarchical tree to apply policies that would inherit down at any point in the tree. Users, groups, computers, mailboxes all belong to this tree. So it brought everything together so you could have a single security model that would grant access across the applications. Now the challenge is that moving from these inward focused on-premise systems that relied on Active Directory and LDAP, now organizations are using best of breed applications to increase efficiency wherever they might be found. Each of these applications has a different security model and they're not based on Active Directory and LDAP typically. So other systems like cloud systems put all the jelly beans in one jar. They're typically database uh, based applications. So they're not LDAP or structured. So the different types of users or jelly beans are all mixed together in these systems, your partners with your customers, with your employees. And the admin roles in these systems are very uh, non-granular. They grant typically access to all the users, global admins in Office 365, granting access to all the users. And the admin roles in these applications are really uh, few and they're too broad. So typically there are not very many admins, uh, admin roles, and they grant access to large portions of the users and grant uh, too many privileges. So it's very difficult in, the, in this model to limit admin rights as to which admins can see and manage which users. Typically privacy is a problem because uh, different types of users, if they have access to the admin consoles of these applications, they can see each other. And it's very difficult to allow, as an example, partner A admins to only see partner A users and to manage their permissions. Computers are also being replaced by uh, containers in Docker or Kubernetes uh, based infrastructures. So they're often not part of an Active Directory infrastructure so that the security uh, from the old world does not really apply to them. And further exacerbating the problem is that Organizations now have many jelly bean jars or many cloud applications, uh, picking vendors for the best functionality in each different area. 
So you have users and identities spread across the cloud and on-premise in many different systems, each with its own security model, and each, uh, but still having to be managed and secured and audited and have compliant access. And PowerID has a solution for the Jelly Bean problem. This solution uses a unique technology which takes your identities or jelly beans of all various types, whether they live in on-premise systems or scattered across cloud systems, and organizes them automatically into virtual containers or mini tenants. These virtual containers can represent any organizational structure that you desire that matches how you would like to delegate security. This virtual container model is much like the traditional LDAP or Active Directory model, where you can create an organizational tree, a virtual tree, and then apply policies to these virtual container locations to control who can do what as far as administrative actions for identities and resources and applications, and also enforcing privacy, who can see what, restricting users and delegated admins to their, to their containers or a limited scope of authority. So this virtual container technology organizes your identities and resources that you're protecting to allow you to have very fine-grained control granted to admins and users over which users and objects they can see and exactly what they can do and enforcing your privacy restrictions. So admins can easily be assigned a set of actions for various object types in just their container. So here's a visual representation. So the technology behind the, the virtual containers to organize these identities or jelly beans is what's called RBAC mapping or role-based access control mapping. So the way it works is that you can create in EmpowerID an organizational structure or location structure as we call it, representing your company. Uh, internal, external, your customers, your partners, and you can create these trees in multiple dimensions. You could break it down by geographic dimension, you can break it down by business unit and cost center dimension. Um, you can have multiple different dimensions represented in the tree, and the objects, identities, applications, application roles, uh, anything securable in the external systems, even down to the virtual machine level, will dynamically be reshuffled or assembled into the structure that you've created. Therefore, you can apply policies against a tree like you could before with Active Directory or LDAP, granting admins rights over users, let's say, globally in the organization. Or let's say you want to grant U.S. admins visibility only for users in the U.S. and a set of administrative activities. You could grant partners, let's say partner admins and partner A, admin access to manage identities, but just for partner A users. So they can't see or know about partner B users. So this technology works against any system, whether it's uh, SAP, ServiceNow, Active Directory, even legacy systems such as RACF mainframes. So you have a single security policy that you can audit and control regardless of the system itself. If we take a quick look at this, um, in this example, Barry White is logged into EmpowerID, and he is a partner admin, or supplier admin, it's sometimes called. So Barry is a partner admin for our partner organization, Avanad. So in this, ex in this system, we have thousands of partners, but you'll notice that Barry can only see a single node in the tree, which represents his virtual container for his partner company, Avanad. Now, in the grid here of objects or jelly beans that he can manage, you'll see a wide variety of, of systems represented. You'll see Office 365 user accounts and an Office 365 tenant. You'll see SAP ECC ABAP users, Active Directory users, and Salesforce users. Now, what these all have in common is that they have been virtually arranged into this virtual container uh, related to the Avanade organization. These are all user or uh, security objects that belong to users or the Avanade organization. So therefore, Barry, when he's using the user interface or even at the API level, he's authorized to see these objects and this location and to perform a limited set of actions against them. 
but not to be able to see users or identity objects in other partner organizations or outside his scope of authority. The security extends all the way down to even the, the ability to provision new identities. But again, Barry is restricted to only be able to provision identities as suppliers and only within his organizational container. So a more extended example, we see Joseph in this one. Joseph has been granted the right to manage user accounts. And this in this example, it's not based upon him being a partner in a partner organization, but the same technology applies to be able to delegate any slice of the organization. So Joseph has been granted the right to be a user account password administrator, but the, the slice here is that he can only see and manage user accounts that are in any SAP ABAP system. So he has a, a role granting visibility of only SAP accounts. So if he were to even list accounts via the API, he would not see any others. He's been granted a role that grants him the activities to perform password resets and unlocks, again, only for these SAP accounts. And he's been granted access to a role which grants him the user interface, the workflows and the web pages and the APIs to be able to see and manage and perform these administrative actions. So this Jelly Beans allows you to, to slice any your organization any way you like, regardless of where these objects reside and the security model of the system they're coming from, to enforce granular privacy and security with auditable delegated administration. Now the technology going behind this, in conjunction with the virtual containers, as we saw, is what's called TRBAC or task-based RBAC. So you have the ability to grant just the user interfaces and APIs that a person should see. And in addition, the data they should have access to see. In the case of Barry, it was technical objects from any system, but only related to his virtual container organization, Avanade. But in the case of Joseph, the, the data visibility was scoped by system type. So he could see only user account objects, but only from any SAP system. But with the user interface access and the data visibility access, they would not be able to perform any actions against these objects. There's the third component that's necessary, which is the data access, which again is scoped. So in the case of Joseph, he could perform password resets and unlocks, but only against user account objects in SAP systems. Whereas with Barry White, he could perform a, um, identity provisioning, resets, unlocks, and terminations, and his data access was scoped against any of those technical objects of various types, but related to his virtual tenant for his company organization. So you can see, based upon this technology, it's very easy for organizations to embrace this digital transformation without losing the ability to apply their traditional security practices to these new systems. So you can have a single security model to control who can do what and who can see what across a very diverse cloud and on-premise landscape.